Hey guys, welcome to Mic'd Up. I'm your host, Mike DeChocho, and thank you so much for being with us today. Today's topic is how building a business is very similar to baking a cake. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. Before we do that, I want to thank everybody who's been tuning into the show over the last three years now, 200 consecutive Mondays plus now. I've been putting out episodes. And as you know, most of the time, it's not myself. It's actually me interviewing a guest. The whole idea is to inspire you to be brave and bold in pursuit of your dreams. And the way we do that is by picking the brain and getting in deep into the story of my guest and figuring out how they've achieved their greatness. And I have people on from all different walks of life, different success levels, success defined by who, right? Um, I mean, financially successful. I've had Olympians on, gold medalists, people that have been in business, successfully launched and sold and and you know purchased businesses. I have venture capitalists on that have you know more coin than they know what to do with it. Um, I've had a lot of successful people on the show, and why I share that with you is because. The whole purpose of me launching back in 2019 was to get this information out to you. I was like, you know, I was interviewing, actually before I was interviewing people, I was just meeting business owners for a cup of coffee just to share this real quick. And I'd have these amazing conversations because most people thought we're going to just talk about business. Like, how can you help me? How can you help me? Let's send a referral. Let's join this networking group. And I was really interested to get to know them. Like, tell me your story. Like, if you're an attorney, like, how'd you get into that? Is that in the family? Did you, you know, see a movie that inspired you to get into that field? Like what actually triggered it and at what age and, and, and why are you doing it now? And where are you looking to go? I always ask people kind of like how you got to where you're at today. You know, how is this fueling you up and how is this your purpose, you know, that you're giving back to the world and where you're looking to go? And that's kind of the idea of the conversations that you'll see with the guest interviews. I've been getting a lot of great feedback with some of the recent guests we have on. I'm not going to name names. There's too many, but um, I've had some awesome guests on the show so far, and I got some good news. We have amazing guests lined up throughout the fall into the winter months, so hang with me. There's a lot of great interviews coming up on Miked Up, but today I, I was, I've been encouraged by some friends and people in my network and my mastermind group and you know some people tuning into the show that just shoot me a DM on Instagram or you know, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok a little bit, and I'll get messages where people like the solo episodes. Um, and I always check my numbers too, and I like to see what episodes are doing better. And the last couple solo episodes have done very well. So that's telling me that you guys enjoy this. So that's why I'm doing this today. So let's get back to it. And I got notes here too. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, yes, I am reading some notes. If you guys are listening to this on Apple, Spotify, and however or however you enjoy listening to your podcast, thank you for being with me today. Remember to like and subscribe, obviously. I always kind of forget to do that until the end. So I'm reminding you to do that now. Um, if you love this content and, and you feel called to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I do read those. They do make my day. Um, and they remind me why I put the time and energy into this. I mean, I love doing this stuff and I do it, you know, because this is a passion of mine. Some people love to go play golf. I love to interview people. I love to put positive energy out into the world. So I would do this whether it was monetizing or if it was free or I'm doing this because this is what I feel called to do. And when somebody like yourself leaves a review and shares your heart with me, lets me know how important that is to them. That does really make my day. And it reminds me of why I put this time and energy into it to um, really connect with people. Because the podcast is the podcast, but without you listening, without the audience, the mic'd up universe, tuning into the show, there is no show, right? So thank you for being with me today. I really appreciate you. Again, if you're tuning in on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the other solo episodes and those great guest interviews that are coming. All right, so let's get right into it. Building a business is like baking a cake. Are you thinking, Mike, what the heck are you talking about? I thought of this the other day. And I really wanted to share it with you. I felt it was good. I thought the analogy was really good. And here's the true reason why I'm deciding to dedicate a whole podcast episode to this is because I got some wonky advice. Like when I launched my business and I was a young entrepreneur and listening to a lot of podcasts and reading a lot of books, I was getting kind of this BS. I'm not going to lie. Like it was not really healthy for me at the time to hear it or to be thinking of things that way. So this analogy today, building a business and how it's like baking a cake, 
um, it, it, it's to help you out. And I really do believe if you listen to this um, with an open mind and you're an early entrepreneur, um, you're thinking about leaving your W-2 to start your own business, I want you to check this out because um, this this is something I wish I knew seven years ago, six years ago, when I was really getting into the business. So here's the idea. How the heck is building a business like baking a cake? And the more I do think about it, it is a pretty accurate statement. So what I mean by that is you have to follow a recipe in the correct order. And let me repeat that. In the correct order for it to work, right? So early on when I left my W-2 to start my business, I was getting this short-sighted advice. And it was ready, fire, aim. Ready, fire, aim. Hmm. Instead of ready, aim, fire, right? So I certainly understood the concept to get on, and I can get on board with that to a certain extent. And on the one hand, you do need to always be, you know, kind of writing that up recipe, and then you need to take action, right? So you don't always be in think mode or planning mode. Got to take action. But ready, fire, aim is like almost like a bull in the china shop. Like that's a lot of action. There's a lot of momentum and movement going on, but is it is it really directed? And so, you know, for that exact reason, I wanted to release this episode for you today um, and speak on how I can now look back on the first six years of my business as an entrepreneur and wish I didn't follow that misguided, ready, fire, aim direction so closely because I really did. Now, you probably heard this before. There's a similar saying uh, that entrepreneurship is like jumping off a cliff and learning how to assemble a plane on the way down. Highlighting that entrepreneurs need to create on the fly, in this case, literally, right? We adjust swiftly under pressure. Cool, I appreciate that, right? And the idea rewards the fact that as an entrepreneur, you did the most important thing. You jumped, right? You have to jump first. You got to take action, right? And as much as I agree with that, just like with the cake analogy, until you start baking, you'll never have a cake. True, right? You can review that recipe 700 times in a row, but you need to preheat the oven and get to work. Cool. I appreciate that. But hold up. Why freaking wing it? Like, why just jump out of the plane or off the cliff and try to figure out how to build something on the way down? Like, why, why would you try to figure it out after you're in the air? So you don't have to do that. You don't have to jump off the cliff or, you know, build the plane while learning on the fly. With your life on the line, your life is on the line. You start your own business, that's your livelihood. That's your bank account. That's your family time. That's everything. So if your life is on the line, why not get prepped a little bit better? I certainly wasn't, Okay. So wouldn't you read some books on plane assembly first (laughs) if you knew you were going to jump? Uh, Would you jump over a body of water? Make a smarter decision, right? Well, if you know you're jumping, maybe you should time it out so you got a little bit of a safety net there. Um, Would you jump with a team? Think about that. Have people around you, and each of you are a different expert, like with a different component on plane assembly. So who's the pilot? Are you the pilot? That's a CEO analogy, right, for anyone who's following along with me here. So who's the pilot? And some people on that crew are going to be better at taking on the creative visionary role. Others are going to be more technical and hands-on. You need to know this up front, right? This is all part of the planning. If you don't, you're coming crashing down to earth fast, like I did. And here's the thing. I now know that I didn't have to learn that the hard way. Some things, sure, absolutely. You can only kind of learn it as you, you got to go and get dirty. But man, you don't have to jump out there without having that game plan figured out, right? So when I review that, the best thing I did was jump. The second best thing I did was survive. The third best thing I did was realize I could have been way more prepared before I jumped. And I want you to just stop right now if you feel like, man, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and quit my W-2 tomorrow. Like, you got to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, you know, how much money you can spend, how long the rope is, what are you going to do? Like, I, I, to me personally, I'm someone who the analogy is like, 
one foot on land, one foot in the water. I felt like I needed to jump in and kind of swim with the sharks because that's how I need to learn how to survive. So I kind of chose a little bit of that, a little bit of that crazy, right? Um, I think is how I'm wired, wired differently. Um, true, but man, like I said, you know, whatever analogy you want, swimming, jumping, and flying, you name it, like you can totally be more rehearsed and prepared for that moment. So let's go back to baking for a second, right? So baking the cake, you have to prepare the cake in an exact order. And then you have to use the right ingredients. You don't just throw anything in there. So specifically, you need the right amount of ingredients for the cake to have a chance to come out right. And we all know that if you tweak it a little bit, it can really screw up the cake. The oven needs to be prepared and, and prepped for a certain amount of time at the right amount of heat, right? And the cake then is baked for a specific amount of time. If you bake it too long, you burn it. Not enough, it's undercooked, okay? So if you want a great cake that pe people are going to truly love it, right? You use fresh eggs, real butter, pure vanilla e extract. I mean, you get the idea. You're going to put all the best ingredients in there. With a successful business, you need talented people. These are the ingredients. Talented people, an innovative product or service, adequate funding, a need or a problem that you're solving, right? Without the, the quality ingredients, neither the cake nor the company will rise. All right. So dad joke aside there, very punny. But no, think about this. Preheating the oven is like setting up your work environment. With the business, you can secure funding, establish business relationships, rent that office space, or if you're working from home, set up your home office. Right. So this preparation allows things to go smoothly when you're launching. This is your livelihood. Again, why wing it? right? You don't have to wing it. Personally, I took that ready, fire, aim approach, and guess what? Sometimes I hit my targets, and that felt amazing, but the truth is I miss them way more than I needed to, and I had I practiced more, and had I had a better game plan, and I studied better, what do you think would have happened? I, I mean, before going out to the, the, the gun range or whatever, your target practice, whatever, sport you might want to put into this analogy and start firing away like a lunatic, I would have been way further ahead with better preparation. I've also used this analogy too. I'm going a little off script. Um, you know, it, it's like a GPS. We all have GPS on our phones. If someone tells us to get to a location we've never been before, two people are going to that same location. The first person is given handwritten notes from, you know, kind of chicken scratch on a sheet of paper, and they're told how to make 12 different turns until they get to the event. And the second person has GPS on their phone. If they get, you know, lost, it'll reroute them. It's going to know if there's a backup in traffic. It's going to give you an alternative route. Um, it's all there. It's down to the second. You know exactly when you're arriving, um, if there's road work, the whole thing. It's mapped out for you. I mean, it's pretty pretty idiot proof, right? I, I use it all the time. Um who do you think is going to get there or have a better chance of getting there? Right? The person with the GPS. So building out these, you know, having the ingredients and the recipe for your business is like having a GPS, right? That's another analogy. I could have did the whole thing that way. Baking requires attentiveness the entire time. A cake can burn if you neglect it, obviously. A business needs consistent oversight as well to catch problems before you get burnt, Right? So, and in business, when something is burnt, the good news is most of the times you can adjust it. You can try again. You can change it up, change up that recipe. But just like the cake, now it's using more time because you're starting from scratch again. More ingredients, more money. Like maybe following the recipe was not such a bad idea after all, right? Trying to just figure it out, wing it, isn't necessarily what you want to do when you're limited in resources in the beginning, especially time, energy, financially. So once it's baked, think of this, the cake still needs those finishing touches, just like a business. So in this case, frosting, decorations for a business, it would be branding, marketing, insurance, legal. Um, are you a DBA, LLC, S corporation? I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not sure, Go back and listen to, I believe it's episode 202 with Sharon Tasman. She was fantastic. 
She's an attorney. She's done over a billion. And I'm going to joke as a friend of mine who always says billion. He hates when people say billion with a B. Billion with a B. She's done over a billion dollars in transactions legally. She knows DBA, LLC, S Corp, and she can point you in the right direction. Check out episode 202 because she just she gives it to you. I mean, we talked for an hour. She's got a great personality. And a lot of times when people think about law, they they kind of get uptight because it's not exciting. It's not fun. Most of the personalities in that field, I shouldn't say that, but there's a lot of that stigma that personalities in that field, similar to insurance, are going to be this dry life insurance salesman or this attorney that's not going to be someone you want to talk to more than you have to. Sharon is not that person. She's amazing. So check that out if you're looking for a little bit more legal direction. And again, I want to make sure I'm hammering home this point right here. There needs to be a proven sequence for the recipe. And I suggest for your personal health, well-being, and for your business's health and well-being as well, that you study what works first. Then you take action. So before you go off script, think of this like a master chef. They can go off script a little bit. Um, an NFL quarterback, they learn the plays, they do it the right way for a few years, and then the coach has the confidence in the player that they can go off script. We got Josh Allen here. I'm a Bills fan. He goes off script a little bit too much. He gets himself in trouble. Work within the system. He crushes teams that way, and then he goes and makes those special plays, and you, you can't beat him when he's on like that. Um but a master chef can do that because they have so many hours of experience. Like if you're baking your first cake or building your first business, you're not a master chef yet. You're not a serial entrepreneur. You're, that's not you yet. Not yet. It could be you. But you got to get started um, before you go off script and try to do all that stuff. Um, build your foundation first. Get that in place. You'll become more confident. You'll have more experience. And essentially then, like a master chef, you can make some advanced decisions a little bit off a script, right? So how does the master chef know it's going to work? I just said it. They have hours of practice. They know what works. They know it doesn't. They don't even have to use like measuring tools at a certain point because they're so good at it. They can do it in their sleep, right? So again, I hope that you take away from this quick lesson a few things, but I recommend that you follow the recipe Ready, aim, fire. Be a student of your business and your industry. There's so much information in the world today. There's not a shortage of info. A lot of it's free. It's easy to access. It's online. There's books. You can print them. You can read them on your tablet. There's no reason that you should say, I don't have enough information. That's the reason I'm not going to get started. Like that is, that's BS. So be a student of your business and the industry first. Build out that plan and recipe second. And take action and try baking that cake third. Got to do it in that order. And then you'll fail a bunch of times before you have a perfect cake, right? I'm not saying your business will fail and completely crumble, but you'll make these mistakes and there'll be smaller mistakes because you plan and prep for them. But it's inevitable that you're going to have things thrown at you that you're not expecting when you're on, when you're an entrepreneur. Things will go sideways. The better you are prepared, like the quarterback or the master chef, you can make adjustments. But if you're going out there winging it, again, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So here's the deal. Why did I choose to do this today and, and spend this much time on it? I want you to win. I want you to win in your business for yourself, for your friends, for your family, for the people in your community, for the people in your network, for the people, the 7 billion people in this world. We need you to win. It's your responsibility to, to be the best version of yourself and to kick ass, all right? So if you're looking to get started, get out of that W-2. If, that's, if you're not happy there, some people love the W-2 life is for them. There's people that, you know, there's jobs out there that are quote-unquote corporate. We need people in those, in those uh, spaces, right? If there's people that that's the right thing for them. But if you're listening to this, my guess is that's not you anyways. You're tuning into a show about entrepreneurship. So I want you to win, but I want you to have less bumps and bruises and burns than I got jumping off that cliff. I want you to survive when things get tough because they absolutely will, even with the best plans. So I know you got this, and I encourage you to start that business, and I'd love to hear about it in the comments. 
or in my DMs. Please send me a message on social media. Share your business ideas with me. Tell me what you got going on in the comments. Bake up that perfect cake and your business will start to bring in the cake. There's another silly dad joke reference, right? Bring in the cake, baby. Um, Take massive amounts of action to achieve your greatest dreams. And I always tell everybody, remember, BGBG on my shirt here, be great and be grateful. And I'm grateful for you tuning in. And again, as a quick reminder, click that subscribe button, turn your notifications on. If you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify, both of those platforms allow you to leave a review. I know on Apple, you can actually write a review if you want. Appreciate you doing that. Sending positive energy and much love your way. I'm feeling it coming back to me. I look at the downloads. I look at the activity. And the best thing, too, is when people are talking to me and they mention, I heard this guest or I heard this solo episode you did, and then they share what it meant to them. It's the best feeling in the world. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to mic Up. I appreciate you. Cheers. And you know what? It's football season. I'm a huge Bills fan. I just spilled my coffee. Go Bills!